ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Manuel Graphics tutorial. Today in this tutorial we'll be creating this frosting icing effect in Inkscape. So I was uh, playing around in Inkscape when I woke up this morning and I um, played around with some curves and using Bezier Pen um, in Inkscape. Something I haven't used before, um, just comparing it to what other programs I have used and I found out it's quite good and it's um, quite responsive, so this is what I created. Um, I created another Inks, well, uh, the reason I'm creating this Inkscape tutorial is from last week's feedback has been quite positive from that previous Inkscape tutorial and I thought I'd just uh, top it up with something else. So this is the um, effect we'll be achieving today. So go ahead and open up Inkscape with a new document. My document size is 1920 by 1080 and you can edit this over at the File Document Properties page and you can also edit if it's Portrait or Landscape. If your um, Inkscape shows the page border, you can go down to Display and uncheck Show Page Border. We'll be using this at the end just to export your images. Before we get started on the main tutorial, make sure we have the line and, the line and distri uh, distribute menu up over on the uh, right here, and the fill and stroke as well. You can access these by hitting these two icons Yeah. So to achieve the effect that we want to start off with is a go to the rectangle tool, and we're going to select a purplish color to start off with and we're going to create a big purple rectangle like that and just leave it like so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down and select the Bezier pen tool or the uh, Bezier curve tool and we're going to select this and we're going to start off around uh, the center of the screen here, the center of your um, or center of the screen, this, the middle point, the middle line through the rectangle. And we're going to start off by producing a small curve, like so. We're going to come up, sweep like that. and create quite a narrow peak come down another moderate size one finish it off and we just click all the way up over and down to form the link like so so now we have this awesome path here sort of a wave line um, going up and down now, as you can see, we've got some hard edges here. That's not what we want. So there's a real hard edge right here between this, this gradient, and coming up, topping this. Um, the second tool from down is the Curves Management tool, or it's an Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And we can select the paths that we've created as it highlights like that in red and we can adjust the nodes, the nodes that alter the curve. So we're going to adjust some um, nodes to make this curve more straight. So once selected the curve, you can touch anywhere on the curve and you can add a node point in which you can alter um, the frequencies and the altitudes, etc. So I'm just going to select this node here and as you can see, it's got no, no sub nodes, no um, areas where you can change the directions and the shape of the curve. So we're going to have to create um, a node here by clicking on this point and dragging. That creates a node that we can then change around, like so, in order to achieve the smooth curve that we want. So. Once so I've done that, we can pull it around like this, and um, now we've got a really 
really good curve going along here. So the next thing I'm going to do is select my curve here and go over to the fill and apply fill and I'm going to choose a grey, a 75% grey, like so, it's sort of a milky colour and turn the stroke off. The next thing I'm going to do is again grab the nerve tool and we're going to add some shadows just to bring this wave out of it. So the first shadow I'm going to add is up over here. I'm just going to click on those two points, drag up and round over, go to our fill tool, select this color, actually no, not select that color, it's color, sorry, bring it down here, select a darker purple, something like that, like that, turn the stroke off and bring it down. Like so. The next thing we're going to do is continue making shadows where we think they look good. Again, adding a fill and turning off the stroke, setting this down under like so. We'll just bring a shadow around here. It's quite a large bubble shadow. So you just want to find push the lines in, make sure nothing's too far over the edge. That'll be nice. And again Add a fill to it and remove that like so. Um, over here we're going to need some shadow. Like so again like so so now we've got the shadows done you can also add one there if you like um, now we've got the shadows done we just want to bring out some emphasis by adding some highlights now to do the highlights it's a very similar effect and we're going to be starting off with quite a large highlight. I like going with the curve for my highlights. It's just like, it's just how I like doing my my highlights. And again, is that a fill? Something a bit lighter like that, and remove the stroke. It's a bit too. And we continue to add these highlights in areas to contrast between the shadows. Let me redo this one. There we 
bring it up like that. So you can edit it using these. Right. And especially with this, just want to make a straight line. Just bring the node all the way in. Pull down to create that kind of shape. Once that's done, I'm going to fill it in. We'll see with our highlight color. Get rid of that hideous stroke. And bring it down using arrow keys. Making sure we don't have any pointy pointy bits like that. Just bring that node up. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's nice when it is. And I'm just going to add one more here. Again, going with the curve always, I think, has the best look. And just drawing in this extended node here to smooth that out. Not like that one. like so. And so in that situation I was kind of stuck um, between how I was adjusted and you can just play around with the different nodes and you will definitely get the effect that you like if it's adding more nodes or changing the nodes. And this is, it's got two points that stick into the thing we don't want. So just bring them back another. and that white bit's fine. Just, it's a bit of detail. So that's um, how we create this milky icing sort of um, uh, cream frosting effect. Basically explain the basics of using curves um, in Inkscape. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I shall catch you in my next video.